with just a touch away. Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Now moved to the apparel design studio. And this really is going to be the future of Arvind. And so let's talk about that, Mr. Lalbhai. Uh, by the third quarter of this financial year, I understand that your demerger will be completed. Sure. And therefore, Arvind will then be the traditional textiles business. And you will have uh, Arvind Fashions, if I understand sure. correctly, which will be the branded apparel business. Right. Talk me through what you think the growth potential for both these businesses are. So I believe that the textile business, we are building the business on four pillars. One is... As you have rightly said that till now we have been a textile company, so we have been making fabrics and we have amongst the largest capacities in respective businesses in the world. But unless we make the final product, which is a garment for our end consumer, be, be it H&M, be it Levi's, be it Gap, whoever it is, when we make the final garment and we are starting from fiber, could be man-made, could be natural, like cotton, tensile, and manufacturing the final garment with design, with silhouette, with that means we are providing a complete solution to our customer. Sure. That is the time we become strategically important to him. Because now we are a one-stop shop. He doesn't have to buy from me, nominate my fabrics to Bangladesh, lose a huge amount of time in moving the goods from here to there, have a whole set of quality control people, and merchandisers manage this entire very complex supply chain. Here he will come to Arvind, we will work together as partners, we will design, we will innovate, we will bring in newer products, we will make fabrics and products intelligent. The second thing is Arvind as a brand is one of the most recognized brands in the entire fabric uh, uh, world. So we are building Arvind as a brand where we are selling fabrics and a customized solution for occasion wear. So it is tailored solution and ready to wear Arvind, the entire uh, apparel solution. So these we are starting the EBOs, MBOs and key accounts. So Arvind will emerge as a major brand. Apparel brand. Apparel brand. Apparel brand. Across price points. Across price points. So, similar to the leader in our space, which is Raymond's. Correct. That if you go to a Raymond shop, today you have fabrics, you have tailoring. So, for your marriage or occasion where you can get a customized, unique uh, kind Piece, of yeah. uh, uh, Piece of apparel clothing, yeah. for you, yourself. And you also have ready-to-wear uh, Raymond shirts, trousers, suits. Right. Exactly the same way because we believe that this is the way a brand can be built where we are offering a complete solution uh, to our end consumer. Correct. So this is another pillar where Arvind will be basically two things, a technology company and building a brand. So from a conventional textile company, we'll have an asset light model. Hmm. We are not investing in spinning. We are not investing in weaving. But this plant stays as is. This plant stays, but over a period of time, we are putting out our assets and giving it away to our, our channel partners. Like in denim, I have divested all my looms. Somebody else owns the looms. So our partners... But they operate on your facility. No, they operate... This is the in, Naroda plant. Yeah, in right. Naroda, we have already out, completely given away all our looms to our partners and they are part of our value chain. Okay. So we are no more managing, so right. our assets, we are becoming asset light. And you expect to continue doing that We will for continue all doing your this non and on Satej also, you right. have 1,500 looms, Correct. in five years we'll have none. This will be only a processing center, this will be only a designing center, this will be only creating innovation and we will be only giving the complete solution to our 10 most important customers globally and around 10 or 15 most important customers domestically. Okay. So that is the model. Okay. And more than these two pillars, we, are, we have gone into advanced material division, hmm. which is using our core capability of textiles. We are now providing solutions to various industries, yeah, from automobile just, yeah. to various we things. So that, that is the detail. third 
third pillar, which is again uh, based on technology and intellectual property rights hmm. and with partnerships with some of the best companies in the world. Hmm. So this will also create a huge amount of shareholders value. The third trend which we are seeing is that I very clearly believe that over the years, I think man-made fibers will become a, they are already dominant right. in the entire apparel uh, market, but they'll become much more dominant and the share of cotton will keep on reducing because cotton will become expensive. The land under cultivation will go down because we require food grains for increasing population. And as a result, cotton will become the kind of fiber and product for more affluent mass of customers. As far as polyester is concerned, it, it man-made fibers are concerned, it will give all kinds of flexibility. It, will, it can be made uh, intelligent. Mm. We can put a microchip in it. We can, we can uh, do all kinds of, uh, put all kinds of functionality into it. So it can breathe better than cotton. Correct. It can control temperature. Uh, it will keep on becoming cheaper because it is mass produced and there is no reason why it should become more expensive. Right. So over the years, Arvind wants to invest and become very large in man-made fiber segment. When you say invest, does it mean that... Uh, invest means we'll again invest in the last leg, which is only processing. Correct. Again, the... the Can you do that in this, this plant has the facility to do both cotton and man-made fibers? Yes, yes, we have already started and sportswear and athleisure right. are the fastest growing segments in the world. It is replacing casual wear in a major way. Right. To a certain extent, denim's market share will be taken away by athleisure. So we are the first company in India building a complete vertical facility. So we'll buy, of course, filament or fiber from You'll outside. You'll buy from outside, yeah. But then subsequent to that, yeah. we'll be making the full garment. And then the set of customers would be, of course, Adidas and Nike and uh, Lululemon and all kinds of newer brands which are growing dramatically. Yeah. And that's the exciting kind of opportunity, which is the fourth pillar okay. of, now, of Arvind. I have a set of rapid questions sure. for these four pillars, okay? Which means effectively that your textile business today, which is the residual Arvind Limited, will no longer be a textile business maybe in 10 years from now. No. It will actually be a apparel solutions slash self-owned brands business. Am I correct? Yeah, Arvind is a brand. Arvind is a brand, right? Yeah. And you'll have Arvind Fashions, which will only do third-party brands. No, Arvind Fashions has a whole portfolio of brand. Now, Arvind as a brand cannot sit in that because Arvind is the, is the mother brand of this textile company. But both companies will then become branded apparel. Have I understood that correctly? Arvind will be one part of Arvind will be the Arvind as a brand. Correct. That is our B2C business. The biggest business. part, right? You said that by, let's say, 1,500 looms here, you said in 10 years no, you will not... No, but my fabric business as a solution provider to, to the 10 brands abroad and 10 brands domestically and my new business right. of sportswear and athleisure right. will become a multi-billion dollar business. No, so you're, Arvind can become you're, a brand which is a billion dollar, but see. it will not become bigger than my... I don't know how it will pan out, but... It is not that Arvind will become only a brand company. Other business will also be manufacturing textile, but not selling textile to, uh, to customers, selling apparel solutions to customers, right? Exactly. So that will also be an apparel company. 80% yes. I mean, of it, it also a, will it be is apparel. It B2B, it is a B2B solution provider to major yeah. brands. Yeah, the only reason why I'm stressing on this is not because I think there's anything wrong. I think that when this demerger happens, people will try and understand what do these shares represent? Do I want to be invested sure, in this business? Sure. What do these shares represent? Do I want to be invested sure. in it? Hey, I always liked Arvind for textiles and apparel, but I don't care for the engineering business. So I'm saying sure. people will have to pick and choose. For that, they need to understand what each of these businesses Absolutely. So will Arvind, look like 10 years Arvind from now. Arvind Textiles will be a B2B business, which will be the substantial part of it, but in a new avatar, Correct. as I have described, right. because and we are becoming more technology-oriented, IPR-oriented, right. asset-light business. Correct. And it will also have 
a B2C, B2C business. business. Yeah. As a brand, Arvind. And Arvind Fashion. Arvind Fashion is pure brand. B2C. And it has nothing to do with manufacturing. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And at this point, you've spent the last, just to you know, sort of move the conversation back to also the branded business. The last few years, you haven't really brought in any new brands into the business. I think Gap was the last, if I correct. No, Sephora no. was the last. Sephora. But not a apparel, modern we accessories. In, yeah. Um, so, yes. So uh, you're consolidating but that. But the whole objective is that we believe that we have uh, the mature businesses are already delivering 30, 35, 40% ROSI. Hmm. So look at US Polo. Suppose I have to house US Polo alone. Hmm. I mean, I'll start competing with the most valuable company in this space. I don't want to name them. Hmm. But <laughs> my numbers would look very similar. Hmm. Right? Um, uh, look at Arrow. I mean, it's up there in, in ROSI and, and the way it is throwing up free cash flow. Flying Machine, our home built brand is now in the first three uh, jeans brands in this, this country. Hmm. And it is doing extremely well. Okay. Correct? Yeah. We have a set of uh, new businesses which we are nurturing. And when you nurture them, it brings down the ROSI, it brings down because initially you make losses. So we want to focus on a few large opportunities. Okay. Something like Sephora, something like undergarment, something mm -hmm. like value retail, mm -hmm. something like flying machines, something like uh, US Polo, something like Arrow, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein. So this is our set of huge winners which is going to, we believe, that will create disproportionate kind of valuation okay. for the shareholders. Two things that you raised, and I'm going to bring up both of this, return on capital employee. Right. Um, your projections sound very ambitious, sir. I think you're at 5.2% sure. in the apparel business. Sure. You hope to be at 35 to 40% in sure. FY22. Sure. And I'm going to break this down a little bit. I know you said that your power brands right now, which are four or five, are doing very well for you and are already at Rosie, as you call it, of those levels. Sure. But your non power brands, sure. which is almost another 15 of them, are not doing half as well, right? Sure. And some of them have actually been struggling for a few years sure. now. Sure. So, how are you going to get to 35 to 40% in the apparel business? And again, in the textiles business, while the return ratios look better, you're at about 10. Uh, you hope to get to 18%, you know, by 22, 23. Sure. Are these not very aggressive? Not really, because you see, we will become impatient. We will not allow things if they don't improve. Like, you haven't one of the things we have been told that you have a long tail, let's say, in the brand's portfolio. Mm -hmm. Now, we will not allow tail to wag all the time. So you'll, you'll dissociate we'll to, with we'll some we'll brands? We have to take logical you'll decisions. Prove. Either we... But you we, haven't been impatient so far? No, no, we have been Im impatient, but you have to give certain time. Okay. And you see, in India, a lot of legislation also changes. We had GST, mm -hmm. correct? We had uh, import duty imposed on... But GST is only going to benefit players like you, right? No, no, we discussed that Yes, but prior to that, there was a... a duty imposed on all imports. So when these kind of changes, macro changes happen, hmm. and then that is not the time when you can decide whether this brand which you are nurturing has potential or it doesn't have potential and we will we'll So you will them. prune brands in your branded apparel to, business? If we need to. Okay, so just just talk me through how you hope to achieve these return ratios, given that the, you'll have many different parts of this business, right? You'll have, like you explained to me, uh, the textile business, which will become a garmenting business over a period of time. What are the margins there? What are the kind of returns that you expect there? Then you will have the self-owned Arvind brand apparel line. What are the margins there? What kind of returns will you expect in that? That's the textile company. In the branded apparels company, you may prune some brands, you may not prune some brands. You will have an expanded store strategy. Uh, you know, all of this will add up. So what kind of margin slash return ratios can we expect, you know, with all these moving sure. parts? See, predominantly I'm chasing Rossi because margins are very difficult to compare when your business model is changing. Okay. Because the margin for garmenting alone huh. is quite different from fabric margin. Suppose I was selling fabric, the EBITDA should be 20%. Okay, so how are you, just, just talk, so, talk so, us through it from and, the point of view and, of and return on capital. for garmenting, it is a very asset light model. Like we don't buy land and building. Hmm. We go into a ready, ready land and building. So okay. there is no, no kind of capital allocation there. Hmm. The machines are completely very low in price. Right. We go for very high amount of automation. So right. there is certain amount of capex. 
but it is not uh, i mean the roces are very high okay. so suppose i am getting 12% return only for garmenting let's say i, I buy fabric from outside hmm. and i do only garmenting bit hmm. at a 12% ebitda hmm. my roce would be 30 35 okay so that's the model okay so if you ask me your roce uh, your so ebitda has come down right. but ebitda is not a measure there Rosie is the measure should be so a measure take me across. So, what, what what are your expected returns so on I each one of these textiles, pieces? So, I think in textiles, definitely in the entire piece of textile business, we should be higher than twenty percent Rosie. Your garmenting process will be done and dusted in by twenty two, twenty three, as early as that. That's just four years from now, and that's when you you know promised such a dramatic improvement in return on capital employed. So, therefore, I was asking, how do you hope to achieve that in four or five years? Is that not too aggressive? Because those are the targets you've set out for twenty. 2022-23. Firstly, we are adding very little capital. Hmm. All this 500 crores which we are investing will be giving very high returns because as I'm saying, that if I'm investing in the last mile, hmm. it gives you 30% margin. Okay, so this is how you're going to achieve it. 30% okay. Rossi, correct? It. Yes, there is a gestation period of one year. I have to have 5,000 workers hmm. coming from with no background to train them and ah. to get them to a to peak efficiency of 70% yeah. takes exactly a year. Okay. But after one year, that investment or that capital allocated to that business should give me 30% return. So this is what analysts call operating leverage kicking in after a point yes, in time. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, so this is, this is how it will be And the branded apparel business from 5.2 Branded apparel, it is, it is quite simple that I 5. think... 5.2 to 30 to 40%. No, no, one, one shouldn't look at it this way because see, we have certain businesses which are not giving us the return and, 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 and that whole portfolio is looking at 5%. But there are jewels in this. And as I'm saying that we will, we will work on it to ensure that the kind of shareholders value because the only mantra we want to follow hmm. is to create shareholders value. Okay. So I think growth for the sake of growth has no value. Cool. The, the main purpose of a publicly listed company is to create shareholders value. So whatever it takes to create shareholders value, okay. I'll do it. Okay. And, and it is quite possible. I mean, if I show you the arithmetic, of course, I can't divulge that I will prune this or I'll take this out. Or I'll, but it, it, is, it is quite obvious to anyone who's studying our numbers. That's or how you're going to do it. That it can be done. Yeah. It's not something which is, I mean, and, and we never talk about numbers which are which are not doable, okay. then we may sh fall short of it because our execution is faulty. Huh. But our numbers are well thought of and reasonably conservative. Okay, Mr. Lalpa, one question. I, whilst you may consider pruning some brands uh, or may not. I'm not the, promising may, that. May or may I'm not just, huh, in huh. the branded apparel business. Uh, you know, I think even Kulin has been quoted in a couple of articles as saying that, yes, of course, the biggest growth in the branded apparel market is in the mid-market se segment. Exactly. The sub-1,000 rupee, you know, right. apparel. Um, but none of your third-party brands, if I may call them that, actually exist uh, predominantly in that space, if I may call it. So that's a bit of a vacancy. Are you hoping to fill that? through the Arvind brand itself or will no, you no, fill no. that through foreign brands? See, the unlimited format right. is that format. Sub-1000? Yes. Hmm. And a little beyond that. But that is the value segment. Hmm. And that's a retail format and we are doing omni-channel now. Hmm. So we are online and offline both. Hmm. So we don't need to only increase, uh, uh, you know, physical stores hmm. to increase the volume because a good part of it is also going to be online, hmm. which will require no physical kind of uh, space. So that in itself is a huge opportunity. And already there are companies which are $2 billion in this space. Okay. So my final question is this now. Well, Q3, we see the demerger take place. You've laid out the medium to long term picture very, very clearly, right? Over the last uh, seven minutes that we've been speaking. The, the, the shorter term picture is not looking very good. First quarter was not very sure. good. And if I understand correctly, when the apparel business lists, it will be a loss making business. It will only be an EBITDA profit, right? Marginally here or there, whatever numbers we may have given. Correct. I don't really so remember. So, what does this year, FY19, look like? Because I think even in your guidance, you've mentioned that for the textiles business, you don't see an improvement in margin of more than one, one and a half percent. And in the branded retail business, you don't see an improvement in margin for more than one percent. So, is FY19 is not looking very, very, how do I put it, robust 
I that is that point. is absolutely true because one thing is that the very very um, aggressive uh, or for better word overpriced rupee has hurt us dramatically but not added. anymore now it's not at 70 a, but but see we are constantly hedging hmm. so you 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 are never i mean you because and you follow policy consistently correct. you can't change a policy correct so when you are hedging for a year you cannot take the benefit of a spot price right away got it but at this spot price will look very different right our margins will look dramatically different right correct at let's say 70. Will we see that fructify numbers by the end of this year or you don't think that... In Q4 you will see. In Q4. So we'll see a big bump up because of the rupee mostly. Unless something else is going wrong. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. Unless something else. Oh, yes, yeah. but yes. To, to give you a very clear answer, yes. It will make a difference. Okay. A substantial difference. So you're saying FY19 largely on the basis of the rupee could look better than what we've just painted as a scenario unless the currency we do doesn't believe so okay. uh, unless currencies doesn't go wrong and the world looks very different or trade wars escalate Any, even anything, further at this point anything, in time anything all right mr Lalbhai, thank you so much for all thank the time you. for allowing us access to this beautiful facility Pleasure. and uh, thanks for speaking to bloomberg queen oh no, great meeting you after a long time thank you very much thank you